Hey y'all. Hey y'all, there you are. Fox Cooper, livingcooper.com. Today, I got a Coop simple how-to for you. Did you see that? The light switch on my ceiling fan ain't working right. Took more than one pull just to turn it on. Sometimes it takes more than one pull to turn it off too. Let's see what happens. Yep, see there? Up. There we go. We got it back on. Today, I'm going to show you guys how to change that pull chain switch in the ceiling fan. It's pretty easy. I think you can handle it. Keep watching. Here we go. Okay, y'all. First thing you got to do, kill the power. You kill the power, so there ain't no electricity, so you don't get shocked. So let's do that now. You might have to turn off the breaker to the system, or you might be able to turn on a light switch. Depends on how you're wired and set up. So we'll kill the power, and then we want to check the power to make sure it's actually dead. All right? Let's do it. Okay, y'all. We got the power off. So let's go ahead and take this little chain medallion off for the ceiling fan. Extra little pull chain. And then you see, we got a Phillips screw here, and then there's also a Phillips screw on the back side you can't see. So we're going to take those out. Just using a Phillips screwdriver. Two screws are out. Now we'll just pull this down like this and we'll see that we got our wires in here okay this is a chain switch and it's a basically it's a what they call a single pole switch it only has one wire coming in and one wire coming out so this should be your hot wire so we will check our voltage and we'll make sure that we don't have any power in here before we open it up so I'm using a non-contact sensor this is called a non-contact sensor and it doesn't have to touch any open wires to tell you if there's power in the system and I will show you that. So now we have the power back on and you see our non-contact sensor is telling me there's power here. Still telling me there's power. Non-contact. You get those fairly cheap. All right, turn the power back off and then we'll check it again. Make sure there's no power in here and there's no power. Now that the power's off, we're going to cut our line coming in there. And we will cut the line coming out of here as well. Have the switch. So now we have this um, cover assembly off. And we have our two wires that are going to go to our new switch. Now, to remove this switch out of this cover, it's a pretty simple task. It just unscrews just like that. It's like a little knurled nut. Pull it out, and here's our switch. So you want to take this pull chain switch, go to the big box store, maybe even Walmart might have them, and get your replacement switch. So let me get a replacement switch, and I'll be right back. Come back, y'all. We got the switch. The only problem is this is a brass color chain, high brush nickel. Now it is what it is. It's only had the box store. So we'll use what we got. Okay, y'all. Here's how it comes. You got your two wires, a little pull chain. Like I said, this is brass color. I got brush nickel, but that's all I have, so that's what we gotta live with for now. Maybe I'll change it again later. Comes with a little knurled nut, if you will, so you can put it on the cover, just like that. Now, if you look or if you can hear this, let me see if it'll focus. I don't know that it'll focus where you can see, but you should be able to hear that click. Here's the old switch. It is not. Switching. So we got the new switch. Now there's a couple ways that we can attach these wires to the existing wires. You could use a wire nut. The wire nut twists onto the wire where you twist your two wires together. Let me just show you right here on this switch. You can twist the two wires together and then use a wire nut to go over them like so. Hopefully that'll kind of focus a little better. Your wire nut goes over that. But I'm not going to use this. I'm going to use an inline splicer or also called a butt splice. That's what I'm going to use to connect my wires. Okay, y'all, let's connect this new switch. Use the inline splicer and butt splicer like I'm going to use. You need to take the end of your wire and twist it as tight as you can. And then you'll slip it into one end of that butt splice, just like so. And it should look like that. And then we're going to crimp it. This is a, this is a crimp connector. And you may have a set of crimpers that look like this, a set of pliers that look like this, or you may have one that looks similar to this. There's a bunch of different types on the market. These are usually the cheap ones that you can get, relatively cheap. 
Yeah, the first one I showed you a little more expensive. We're going to use this. You see it's got three different colored dots there. Uh, they're kind of warm. But you have a yellow, a blue, and a red. And this is a red. So it has to do with the size of the wire and the size of the connectors. So we're going to use the red. And we'll just put that right on there. And we'll just squeeze it tight. Just like that. That's all there is to it. It's going. It's, it's in there. So now we'll do the other side the same way. We'll twist it real tight. And slip it into our connector. Just like so. And then we'll crimp it together. Just like that. There you go, nice and tight. Now that we've got both our connectors on this end, we can turn that over. Turn these wires up. Drop it back into the cover, through the cover. Just like that. So we'll put our little nut, and I'm actually going to use the nut from the switch that I took off because it kind of matches. It's silver versus this brassy color. So I'm going to use that. Put it up tight, just like that. Now we can connect it back to the ceiling fan fixture. Okay, so our ceiling fan fixture, we have our two wires that we're going to connect to. And you can see there's no wire exposed. All you can see is the insulation shielding. So we need to strip these back about a quarter to three eighths of an inch. So to do this, you can either use this type, which I would normally use, or you could use this type, this type right here. So on the back of these, so right here, you got the holes for the different sizes of wires. And you'll just stick that wire in there, close it, twist it around, cut the insulation then pull it off. So we're going to do that right now to these wires. So this should be about a 16 gauge wire. Like I said, you want to strip it back to about a quarter of an inch to a three eighths of an inch, something like that. And if you cut it back a little farther, it'll be okay. You can always trim it some. So just like that, a little twist, pull it off. This one here is a little more difficult because it's the way it's up in there. And uh, a little twist, pull it up, and there you go. Now we got our two wires stripped. So we want to twist them tight, just like we did on the two wires on the switch itself. This one here I might need to trim a little bit off, so I'll cut a little bit of that off. Okay, and it doesn't matter which one of these goes into which side of this this switch wire. It doesn't matter. The only thing is, I guess really is I probably should have cut these off a little shorter because we got to get all this wire and stuff shoved back up in there and it might be a tight fit with all this extra wire we'll see I, I can always redo it if I need to so we'll shove that in and we'll use our crimper crimp that just like that and we'll do the other side just like that now we got our switch on so before I close this up, I'm going to turn the power on and show it to you. So there you go, our lights are on, now they're off. Now they're on, now they're off. All right, let's turn the power back off, put it back together, and we'll be done. We'll line up our hole, we'll put our screws in, go to the cup. Take a little screwdriver and snug those up, they don't have to get super tight. Just snug them up, just like that. We'll put our little chain medallion back on there, kind of a chain extender. There we go, we got our chain extender on there. This one back here is for the fan, the fan switch. Let's we'll turn our power back on and look at it. Power's on. Look at there, it works. Let's get this fan back rolling. It's getting hot in here. Okay y'all, this is popscooperlivingcoop.com. For the coop simple how-to, how to replace ceiling fan, chain pull switch for the light fixture. Hope this helps you guys out. Pretty simple, right? All you need, some wire cutters, screwdriver, wire strippers and preppers, which could be the same as your cutters, and maybe even a little voltage detector so you can make sure the voltage is off. Not too difficult. And of course, a replacement light switch. Hope that helped you guys out. We're turn this thing off. There we go, get rid of some of that glare. Hopefully this helped you guys out. Save a little money, right? It's always good when you save money. I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch. Hopefully you guys learned something. If you liked the video, Appreciate a thumbs up. That'd be good. We appreciate comments, good, bad, otherwise. Other simple how-tos you'd like to see, maybe some reviews, things like that. Check us out on our social media, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, all at Living Cooper. Check out our blog at livingcooper.com. Please consider subscribing. If you're not subscribed already, hit that notification bell so you're notified next time I upload a video. Check out our other videos. We got 
lifestyle videos, a bunch of different types of videos. Check them out. Keep watching. We'll see you guys on the next one. Later.